Hey, Dream Team. Good to see you all. Howdy, Rev. Howdy, Pauline. Julia T., welcome home, you too. At least I hope you're home. Good to see you. Let's see. Good to see everybody. That was a long week, as many of you know, who have had to bury parents. Uh, so thanks. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks for everybody that helped out. It was hard. Um, I'm going to go back in mid-October for Dad's service. I think we have the time on that. Uh, I think we have that settled. It keeps changing, but I think it's settled. Doesn't matter. Um, just thank you for everyone that helped out, covered stuff. You know who you are, and I'm so, so grateful for each of you. And I'm excited because we've had great attendance at church the last few weeks, and this past Sunday was 1-2, so I hear. Exciting stuff. Kathy K. So I'm very excited about that. Got people coming in, checking us out, sticking around. And I heard from the Campbells that they are um, recovering well from COVID. Joe and Cynthia and Cynthia's daughter Sophie had COVID, but they seem to be doing a whole lot better. So it's good. Hey, Bowling Green, good to see you too. So lots to celebrate. Grateful for you all and glad to be back. All right, let's see. Our service begins on page 117 of your prayer book, Evening Prayer, right to... We got a couple of things this evening. Hey, Jenny Fox, a couple of things this evening. Today is the day on which the <clears throat> wider church celebrates the festival of the death of John the Baptist, which sounds a little ridiculous when you say festival and death. Uh, feast, festival, and the church doesn't mean the same thing that we think of when we think of celebration. It's more like commemoration. It's a holy day. And today's holy day is in memory of John the Baptist's martyrdom. We'll read about that in a little bit. And then also, <clears throat> I was given this wonderful book by a friend, and it, uh, as the title implies, it goes month by month, and at the end of every month is a pilgrimage site and suggestion. And I think it was July's pilgrimage site where I read it, and then John Cosby got back and said, oh yeah, I was there. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, speaking of people with COVID, I hope John and Karen are doing well. They were exposed. I don't remember if they caught it or not. I hope not. Anyway, so I will be reading uh, August's pilgrimage site in the United Kingdom as well. And then hopefully somebody's been there and can tell us about it. All right, so page 117, evening prayer, right to. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And page 118, the Thos Hilleron. Please pray with me. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm for this evening begins on page 683. We'll just read the first few verses of Psalm 71. Again, that's page 683 in your prayer book. When you get there, please read with me. Page 683, Psalm 71, we'll read the first seven verses of that. Please join me. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. 
I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Telly Warren, I am glad to see that you are back in town. That is fabulous. Okay, one note about that prayer book. You may notice up top, there you go. Some of you know that the Psalms in here are divided up, many of them, into morning and evening sections, and so they rotate through, and the morning prayer sections only get read at morning prayer, exactly. So those of you who have been participating in this for a while will notice that we have been reading the same psalms, more or less, with the evening prayer rotation. But since we have a saint for today that is assigned this reading, uh, the psalms get mixed up a little bit, which is fabulous because we get to see part of a psalm, Psalm 71, that we don't normally see in our evening prayer cycle. Interesting stuff. All right, Psalm 71 it was. And our second reading, commemorating, unfortunately, the death of John the Baptist, uh, is from Matthew's Gospel, the 14th chapter. And as is often the case, I'll be reading from the message. All right, and Matthew writes, At about this time, Herod, the regional ruler, heard what was being said about Jesus. He said to his servants, This has to be John the baptizer, come back from the dead. That's why he's able to work miracles. Herod had arrested John, put him in chains, and sent him to prison to placate Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. John had provoked Herod by naming his relationship with Herodias adultery. Herod wanted to kill him, but he was afraid because so many people revered John as a prophet of God. But at his birthday celebration, he got his chance. Herodias' daughter provided the entertainment, dancing for the guests. She swept Herod away, and in his drunken enthusiasm, he promised her on oath anything she wanted. Already coached by her mother, she was ready. Give me served up on a platter the head of John the Baptizer. That sobered the king up fast. Unwilling to lose face with his guests, he did it. Ordered John's head cut off and presented to the girl on a platter. She, in turn, gave it to her mother. Later, John's disciples got the body, gave it a reverent burial, and reported to Jesus. Here ends the reading. So normally our canticles are designed as a response to the readings to um, comment on it, support it, whatever. There really isn't a canticle that comments very well on beheading. Uh, Let's see. So tonight's tonight's canticle, we'll just do the Song of Simeon. How's that? And that's on page 120. Page 120, the Song of Simeon, please read with me. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Shannon. All right, so as promised, on a more positive note, again from this book, which gives a lot of information about saints from our British or Celtic tradition, uh, August's pilgrimage site is Synod Cell in a place called Bury Holmes. The Welsh words, or I mean, uh, well, it's a Welsh name, but odd English words, there you go. The high tide island of Bury Holmes is just off the northwestern tip of Gower. And I'm not going to get the next part right. If you go to the church at Langeneth, where Senad made his first settlement, you will find displayed the whole of his birth and miraculous survival. From here, take the lane northwest to Broughton Burrows and start a lovely walk through, flower, through flower-filled sand dunes to Bury Holmes. 
On no account try to cross to the island until the tide is out. There are treacherous quicksands here and a murderous current round the rock. At low tide, you can pick your way to the island safely. You'll find two ruins on the eastern end of the island. One is Synod's hermit cell. The other is the remains of a chapel or hostel for the pilgrims who came here in the Middle Ages. There's a little map as well. And John Cosby, if you're watching this, maybe you can enlighten us Wednesday about this if you're feeling well. So there you go. You can visit the Celtic ruins there, but as the author noted, only when the tide is out. Looks like our theme in this book for September is angels. Uh, this author points out that the feast of the Archangel Michael is September 29th, and so it looks like that will be an emphasis for the month of September, again from this book. Not a lot said about angels in the Bible that is really concrete. Don't learn much about them from the Bible. Angels came around later after the Jewish folks had been um, exposed to thinking from Persia or what is today Iran. Uh, once, once they had that thinking, the Iranians, ancient Iranians had a really well-formed cosmology, meaning they had angels and demons and gods and goddesses and all that stuff all ordered out. And we see in Hebrew scripture that once they come in contact with them, then those things start to enter into their own writings and thinkings. So, there we are. All right, page 120, the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And on page 122, we'll pray suffrages B. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of John the Baptizer and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyr John triumphed over suffering and was faithful even to death, grant us who now remember him in thanksgiving to be so faithful in our witness to you in this world that we may receive with him the crown of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And if you will... Please turn with me to page 460, 460 in your prayer book. This is a section uh, of prayers and services around illness. It's a good place to visit. It's a good place to be mindful of, though it's kept in the section of the prayer book uh, mostly for deacons and priests to use. Uh, you've got marriage and other things going on in this section. 
there are a lot of prayers that anybody can use. It's really wonderful that way. Uh, page 460, there's a thanksgiving for a beginning of recovery. Like I said, Joe and Cynthia and Sophie and other folks are recovering from illness, so we want to give thanks for that. Page 460, the prayer at the bottom. Please pray with me. O Lord, your compassions never fail, and your mercies are new every morning. We give you thanks for giving our brother and sisters, the Campbells, both relief from pain and hope of health renewed. Continue in them, we pray, the good work you have begun, that they daily increasing in bodily strength and rejoicing in your goodness may so order their lives and conduct that they may always think and do those things that please you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then here's a prayer from the New Zealand prayer book. Gracious God, you have given us much today. Grant us also a thankful spirit. Into your hands we commend ourselves and those we love. Be with us still, and as we take our rest, renew us for the service of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently, aloud, or typed in the chat box. Amen. Our final prayer on page 126, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Please join me there. Page 126. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. All right, well, what do we know? Let's see, 8 o'clock, Deacon Sue's going to blow your mind with some spiritually refreshing, utterly relaxing compliment. So join her for that if you can. And tomorrow evening, we'll be back here at 6.30 for evening prayer, right one. So... Hope to see you then, and hope that you have a restful evening, friends.